People call these things imperfections, but they're not. Oh, that's the good stuff. And then we get to choose who we let into our weird little worlds. You're not perfect, sport. And let me save you the suspense. This girl you met, she isn't perfect either. But the question is whether or not you're perfect for each other. That's the whole deal. That's what intimacy is all about. Why don't you love me, Jenny? I'm not a smart man. But I know what love is. Yeah. What easy way? There is no easy way. No matter what I do, somebody gets hurt. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Here we are, baby. We are live for the first time or the second time. <laughs> I was at the golly. How far off am I? Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Let me do something real quick while I'm doing this, folks. I'm sorry. This is so totally unprofessional. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, our background. Yeah, it's still green. Don't you want to change that? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. We're still getting our... Well, I'm trying, what I'm trying getting to do... Our kinks out. Uh, let's see. It's in the back. Oh, no. Don't want to do that. <laughs> right in the front. Well, I'm trying to figure out why... Oh, i got to do this. This is why. Our names... Weren't showing up. <laughs> oh, they were gonna get us confused. They're gonna they were gonna think you and they were gonna think me were I two different know. people. <laughs> so yeah, uh, plus our green <laughs> screen. Yeah. Gosh, where's our background? Uh, so the <laughs> green screen can actually go down here, and we can kind of. Uh, what did I choose? Um, sorry, folks. We're trying to figure all this out. Blue screen, no, not blue screen. I don't know why it's not letting me. Is it locked? No, it's not locked. Woo! Welcome to live streaming, folks. Uh, this should, oh, yeah, it is locked. No, cam link four is open. This is my cam link. It should be. Oh, well, it's going to work. It's not going to work anyway, baby. Why? Because. I have your camera running on that screen there, and it doesn't have green screen. So they would be see green screen behind me, but not you. Uh, oh. But we'll figure out the logistics, folks. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we mostly blocked it out because, you know, yeah. yesterday some people were going to the bathroom <laughs> behind us and kind of, I don't think they were and now we, And camera. now we have cats <laughs> walking behind us, and I can't, <laughs> neither one of us could have hid that if we wanted to. So... Sorry, we are trying, and let's see, I want to test the other scenes while we're doing this. Okay, that one's working. We could have had the green screen on that one. Um, So far, the screen's not working, but I'm not seeing any comments. We you got three people watching, so people are watching somewhere. But this is always a test because I don't always trust, um, like, the testing when I'm doing these things. That's why I do it first, and then... We'll see. So I'm going to hop on my own live stream here and post Check your Facebook too and see if anyone just added you from anywhere. And I don't know how to uh, share the link. Well, is it, it, would it be on Facebook? Can I share it that way? Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I see it now. Is it on there though? Yeah. I see it on there. Okay. So I'm just testing a few things while we're trying this out and to see if um, the comments start showing up here. I just posted one on link. I just shared it with my link. So it should go down there. Oh, it's not on. 
Okay, so there's the comment. I can see it. It's showing up there. But my chat widget isn't working, which is like, holy crap. This should work. Yeah, where's all the chat in here? It should pop up, but it's not for some reason. Um, this is why you test things, folks, and just figure, <laughs> please forgive us. We are um, getting back to it. And hello, Yolanda. Yolanda just sees she's watching over on LinkedIn. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to get our Hi, our scenery and stuff just set up. Uh, my comments in my chat widget, for whatever reason, are not working. They should be. Um, it, it shows lost or very quiet. Oh, there it goes. Is it? I thought I saw something a minute ago. Maybe. Yes, no, maybe so. Maybe. I, I don't know. I just saw it for a minute and disappeared. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Um. That's why you got to test us, folks, and see what works, what doesn't work, because everything is showing up not like it's supposed to for some reason. It's just not showing up on my end for whatever reason. So, oh, there it is. Um, I tried to comment from Twitter, but I wasn't sure if I could see it, and we are seeing it, Angelique, if you're watching over on X now. So, uh, so you see the comments showing up there? Really? Oh, yeah, I see them. Okay, so the restream bot is kicking it in. We are testing out here. Um, so, uh, <laughs> sorry, we we wanted to do this and test out a few things because we have been pretty um, active here in the last few days, getting started and doing our own couples live stream slash podcast. Um, with intentionality, we are going to be talking about uh, love, intimacy, relationships. Um, we kind of opened up a little bit about what we're going to be discussing yesterday. So if you didn't check that out, you can. Um, I'm also in the process of creating a website, a, um, a LinkedIn page, a YouTube channel, a uh, Facebook page. So yeah, we're going to cover it all. Um, that should be coming up pretty soon. So I'm going to bring up your comment anyway, Angelique. Hey, hey, hey. Um, and I know you couldn't see it on Twitter. I'm sorry. I don't know. I did use the, I did use it as a destination because I do have it set up, but um, I was just hoping to see if we could test it on all our social medias just to see how everything was working. So um, what do you think, baby? <laughs> <laughs> what do I think about what? About everything, all the confusion and just... <laughs> This is like her first, I'm like just rolling with it. There you go. I love that. <laughs> this is like her first foray into live streaming. So she it took forever to get that intro done, though. But you know, he was making sure it was perfect and looked good, and, and it it's good. So I don't know if y'all saw it at the beginning, but made me cry. So it, it's it's really good intro um, that he created. So yeah, and you know. Yeah. The, that's what I told her. That's a lot of the work, though, when people want to talk about getting into doing a live stream and they're like turn on the camera and then you say, well, we got to do some things to like create and, <laughs> you know, um, put together, say, an intro or something because they take a while sometimes because you have to create with an idea of what you want, uh, put yourself a vision and then put it all together and try to make it work. So we did spend some time like really working on it. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of been inspired a little bit um, to do this. This has just uh, been a passion project like I, t I shared yesterday. But like I saw like what Angelique's um, mentioning, you know, she's going to watch the the replay. But um, yes, definitely. Um, but the thing that I loved about it is the fact that, um, you know, we're trying this out as a couple and part of it was inspired and in seeing what you and Donnell have done with your YouTube channel, with your growth and just uh, being passionate about what it is you both love and share as far as like helping with financial planning. So I'm going to be reaching out to you though, because we are, we've talked about this as well as part of our relationship um, discussion is bringing in things to when you are becoming a couple to like 
start bringing together finances and that sort of thing when you get married or, um, I mean, just even being in a long-term relationship with somebody, I think that's a big thing to discuss. So, um, but one of the things we were doing while, what I love about my woman and what I, um, you know, what I find so interesting is that we were, while I was sitting here doing my work, she was sitting here next to me, um, doing a lot of reading into a book. I love this book. It's actually called love, right? Um, you want to tell them, um, who the, well, I don't can't. I don't know if we can say the last name. Can you say the last? Leo. Yeah, it's Leo Biscaglia. Leo Biscaglia. So it was written in 1972, but really, he was like in his thinking, especially about society and people. It's like, wow, this is so similar even to today. So even though cell phones weren't around back then, like one of the things he talks about is how we lack interpersonal skills, even back then in the 70s, and how people didn't make a very much eye contact with each other. They weren't social. They, You know, he was like just – when I read that part of the book, I was like, oh, my gosh. It, it was as if he was talking about the way I see my students now. Um, so that, that was pretty interesting. But, yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I, while I was, she was actually sitting here next to me reading it out aloud, and we took a lot of... Because he likes audiobooks. I like to actually (laughs) read the books. I don't like to just listen to somebody, like, read it out. I like to actually have the old school, I'm, you know, old-fashioned, I guess, Um, but I like to read these kind of books because I can, like, write on it. I can reread it if I need to. I can jot down notes, and, you know, I can look at it and hold it in my hand um so he likes audio so I was like well if I read it out loud I don't I know that's not going to disturb him he's going to like that so yeah (laughs) I read and that was the cool thing is like she was she was doing what she loved and reading it I was doing what I love and taking it in through audio and listening like I'm an auditory learner I've figured that out um I learn a little bit more by listening than I do like sitting down and actually going word for word and trying to read everything. So, yeah, I like word for word. Yeah. <laughs> so we work well together. So, but one of the things that I did love and we yes. talked about this is it does have a good smell, too. good smell, good quote, mm-hmm. just so many things. Um, but this is what one of the quotes and I'm going to let her like read it off and share it because I found it very poignant and really struck a chord with me when I was just designing and putting together um, you know, just creating the build out for the, our, our live stream when we start doing this on the regular. So, um, this is the book exactly. If you want to go check it out. Um, I love the title as well. A warm and wonderful book about the largest experience in life. Um, uh, so I'll, why don't you read a quote, baby, if you can. Read okay. That. Yes, I can see and I uh, can read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love is always bestowed as a gift freely, willingly, and without expectation. We don't love to be loved. We love to love. If you don't like the scene you're in, if you're unhappy, if you're lonely, if you don't feel that things are happening, change your scene. Mm. Did you hear that, folks? Change your scene. Now, I'm going to go back and take a take a note from her and change the scene. <laughs> go back to this one. Uh, but yes, um, part of it was what we were discussing and when we came up with a lot of the concepts and everything else. And please feel free to like add any kind of feedback or that's kind of what I put in the comments as well. Um, like some of the things you might want to see change because we did put this together and I will concentrate a lot more on the production build out um, what, heading there. But one of the things that I that really made me inspired to like continue to want to do this is the fact that we're going to be both learning from this. Um, I'm already learning a lot of things. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to tell you like even five minutes ago, she was reading um, something out of the book and she like looks over me and says, you know what? That sounds just like you, babe. And I stopped <laughs> and it took me a second. I said, you know what? Say so started reading again. I was like, you know what? You are right. Like there are so many things that I am learning about this. And um, it's great to have a, it's great to have a partner who 
sees me the way that I do and is, you know, open enough to trying out the experiences of sharing my passion. And uh, then hopefully in turn, I turn around and I get to do the same thing, put the same efforts into her passions and what she does. I try to, um, you know, one of her passion projects, and we talked about this yesterday was doing photography. So heck early on in our relationship, we went out to a photography shoot together. It was, it's great. I got to go help her. It was pretty awesome. I really loved like being there and being helpful and just watching her do her thing in her element. Um, so I hope that, you know, in turn me doing this we as got well. To travel too. Yes. And we got to, Oh yeah, that was another <laughs> great. Yeah. I shot, I shot a wedding in Oklahoma. Um, but I mean, everything that we do and what it speaks is like right up our alley and talking about love and all the wonderful things that, you know, we want to go out there and start, Ex- uh, not only learning but sharing our experiences and then having experts and other people come on and share their experiences um so that's kind of what we're you know heading towards and like even taking notes and stuff and doing stuff from the book i mean um i mean it was so interesting um the book that we started and, and i'm to tell you what she's a fast reader because she started reading this this afternoon and i'm she, like Let's see. She was taking notes. I'm about <laughs> ha- about halfway done. So I'm not all the way done. But the like forward was so long. I was like reading and reading. And I thought it was the first chapter, but it was just the the forward. But it was talking about his life and like how he grew up. And it was really funny because um, he didn't realize, you know, how different he was culturally from everybody else because he was an Italian immigrant. Um, but when he came in, like his parents believed that you would not get sick if you were um a garlic around your neck and so every day he's like going to school wearing this garlic and he's like he never got sick ever growing up but he said it you know it it was either because people just didn't want to be around him um or what it was but he just he never got sick um but the way that he learned to love was very um with physical touch And so he didn't understand when he was at school that he couldn't be close physically to anybody. So like teachers and and even other parents of other kids would go tell his parents, like, you need to keep your son under control. Like, let him know he cannot be hugging on my kid. Like, he can't be doing that in school. There's no hugging. There's no kissing. And so his parents had to teach him, like, you can do that at home in private, but you can't do that in public. That is not how you show a you know love outside you have to learn other people's cultures and you just can't do that um so he learned you know how to navigate that but it it took a while because he was very confused growing up because that's how he was taught love um but this book is is great like it, it basically talks about how love is not it's not something that you're born with you know we don't come out just knowing what love is we're taught love we're taught, and, and I know there's that book, The Five Love Languages, um, but I remember reading that book, or I didn't read the book, but I took that test to see what my love languages were, and so I figured out some of them, and they've changed over time, and that's the thing about love, and what he talks about in the book is that love can change. It grows. It doesn't stay the same, um, so just because you might think that this is your love language because of how you were raised, that can change through time and it can change with who you're exposed to, who is around you. You know, so for a while I thought that physical touch wasn't my main um, love language and being with Gabe, like I've learned and grown in love with him and realized that I'm like, he's like, and I'm like, and we show all the love languages. It's not just one. (laughs) So we're not like, oh, we're just physical touch or we're just, you know, the acts of service. We're like all of it. And so, you know, that is possible with love. And love is not just something that just stays there. Like it it has to grow. Um, so that was one one point that he stresses like throughout what I've read so far is that love is a growing thing. And he doesn't believe that you just fall into love. Like you already have the love. And so it just grows from there. Mm. And, you know, one of the things that I really thought about whenever she started talking about that was um, in my past relationships when I was, especially when I was younger, um, 
you know, you come on yeah, camera? you have my daughter just came over. She's like, what are you doing? Come here. You know, we talk about love, right? And how young we are sometimes and not quite understanding what love is. So that's, and, that's my baby. So, Skylar. Yeah. so we do. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you, we make this a family affair around here. So it's not one thing. It's another, you know, you want to go. Go Are you trying to show your baby belly? Bu- oh, she's, she's trying to show her baby bump. She's, she's yes, I'm going to be a too. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's her boyfriend in the back. Yeah, look how <laughs> handsome he is. Very handsome young gentleman. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly. <laughs> look, you're getting comments. <laughs> Hi, Skylar. Yes, you are. They're saying it. Uh, Hi, saying Skylar. hello to you. Of course. <laughs> Gosh, Yolanda, you're watching on YouTube and LinkedIn. Thank you so much for doing that. That's kind of awesome. You're tuning in and watching on both channels. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we talk about love and just um, knowing ourselves and as we're growing up as adolescents and understanding what love is, you know, most of the time when we do fall in love, it's very early on. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. So I think when we're looking at it from the perspective of love now, as we are older in our age, um, I'm not going to say our ages, but as we are older <laughs> in our age, we are, we are learning more and more about Why ourselves. I'm not, well, <laughs> cause I'm about to be a half a century. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, yeah, you know, that thing's going to be coming down the you horn watch, pretty quick. You can watch us on Facebook. Skylar. Yeah. You can watch on Facebook or <laughs> if, YouTube. If you need to go sit down or lay down, you yeah. can watch us on Facebook. So Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll get y'all on if y'all want to come on. <laughs> I got a microphone if you want to say mic. hello. You want to come talk? Come here. Grab this microphone. There's a microphone right here. You can grab talk microphone. about what, what you think love is. Absolutely. Grab this microphone. Come here. Come here right here. Right here. Right in front of the TV. <laughs> yeah, be on camera. Look, Y'all, here. y'all know you want to be TikTok famous. Y'all, You're, y'all already TikTok famous. TikTok You're on TikTok. Videos. I mean, you you have one that went viral. Come on. Oh, yeah. He's got a viral TikTok <laughs> video. He's done something I've never done. <laughs> And yes, half a century is an is, is an accomplishment. So yes, being half a century. No, see, Look, say Come that here, again. Say that on the mic. Say that it's on the microphone. Here, grab the mic right there. Listen to that. Did you hear that? See, She's, see the see that right there on on the, the little stool right there. Grab, grab the that mic. microphone. Just grab it and talk into it. They can hear you. I promise. Without love, life is meaningless. See. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. We love that. <laughs> Oh, Listen, love is the only thing worth living for. See? Okay. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> and, he, and these are the, look, these are the younger generation. These are some love birds right These here. are love birds. Young, young love birds. So <laughs> that That's is true, Skylar. See? It's true. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of what we're going down this journey together and bringing as many people as we possibly can. Because, again, love is all is love is all encompassing. And I think that's part of the journey of why we're doing this together so that we can learn, share love. We can the the struggles and difficulties. I mean, come on, you guys have how old are you? You got everybody has difficulties. Come on. That's just part of being in love and having a relationship. Um, so I'm going to talk to Angelique because we want to have her on. Um, oh, uh, Yolanda said, what is Skylar's boyfriend's name? Lucas. Lucas. L. Can you spell that? L-U-C-A-S. <laughs> what? L-U-C-A-S. L- okay. L-U-C-A-S. There you go. Folks. You're probably going to look him up on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, go look him up on TikTok. He's got a TikTok. <laughs> you can follow him. Yeah, you. he also goes by Lulu. So L-U-L-U. we are again. We are we're a social media household too. We're we're doing this as well, and you know, I I want so many people that we are connected with. We're gonna do like live in person interviews as well. Is one of the things that I'm gonna be approaching this year that I haven't done in my past. Um, so it's nice to meet you. Somebody <laughs> wanted to say nice to meet you, Lucas. Um. <laughs> there's some people watching on different channels so yeah we're 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 here people are watching it's just kind of <laughs> like me 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 
Yes, nice to meet you, not me you. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> See, yeah. You know, those fingers are the, those little keyboards on your on your phone with what is what you you probably watching on is very very small. Uh but yeah, what I was just going back to real quick, um that is what we are going to start doing here in the next couple of weeks. Uh my next week will be spent pretty much doing more of the uh, production build out, um, getting all the information. We are going to have like experts on. So we are going to reach out to dating experts, to uh, intimacy experts, um, just relationship experts in general, people who are um, that is like in their careers and what they do. Uh, Because, you know, we do not only just want to add our own introspective uh, look on what love is, but then also get a professional, someone who that's their career. Uh, I know a matchmaker. I'm going to reach out to her, um, see if she wants to come on and talk about, she already does a podcast, so I'm pretty sure she would be very open to it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be a big part of it is the thing that, um, you know, I, I really want to be very thorough about this project because like I said, it has been a passion project and, you know, it's something that I love and maybe not quite always understand. You know? Yeah, love, um, especially in the book, is really, really essential. Um, so essential that if a baby is born and not held and fed, given nutrition, but never held, never loved, will die. Um, most babies don't survive past the age of two or three. If they're not shown love, love is something that is essential. They've done multiple studies on this. They have studied orphanages. They've done so many studies on it. Um, And yeah, a baby will die without Mm. love. Um, So another thing that they talked about in the book is that um, a lot of times people crave it. So people crave love so much. Uh, that they're willing to lose their identity, Ooh, who they yeah. are, <laughs> just to give in to the needs of somebody else, just so that they're not alone, and so they can find intimacy. So they will lose themselves in it. And then some people are so afraid to give up their heart that they never even truly fall in love either. Um, so there's lots of parts of the book that are very deep like it it was (laughs) a good book so far so yeah we we got a lot of things um that we're going to be putting into practice for ourselves this is what this is what part of this journey is actually is is to put a lot of these things that we're learning that we're reading that we're going to be discussing into practice into our own lives um and that's what it said like said you can't just read about love and talk about love but never actually experience it do it ask the questions um and put it into practice like that's not love that's not learning about love like you have to go through the actions as well so it's it's not just reading about it just saying hello to dr constance leland hello cj thank you for tuning in appreciate you um but yeah that's the, the and one of the big things that when we talk about not just love in general, but then we're going to also go along the lines of seeing the things about intimacy, um, financial, (laughs) financial (laughs) discussions, because as you know, we're even talking about this and this is why it's pretty important. Um, because as we become a unit of one, you know, we're going to have to discuss those, those sort of, sometimes difficult topics and you like we actually, need outside help yes we do <laughs> that's why we're gonna reach out to the stidhams I, I know that's one of the number one reasons for divorce <laughs> is finances <laughs> people it's money um communication money issues um can lead definitely to divorce and uh yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah that's why we're gonna reach out to the stidham household they host their own uh, live stream talking about financial um, growth, literacy, uh, retirement. There's just so many things that they talk about. And I think this is one of the things I would love to discuss with them because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crucial. 
to a relationship and understanding where you are financially and how that impacts your relationship with somebody and whether or not you're going to struggle or you're going to find growth. I like, I like that. That somebody just posted. Oh, what is it? Um, okay. So how do you balance love versus spoiling a child? I have read it. Uh, it is bad to pick up a baby every time they cry. They begin to learn. This is how they get attention. I hate it when people say that. And I have told my students over and over, because I we talk about this in class as well. If a baby cries, pick them up. Find out what's wrong with them. It's not okay to let a baby cry themselves to soothe themselves. That is not okay. Um, so that basically can mess up their attachment issues because when a baby is a baby, and this is uh, by Eric Erickson, who was a psychologist that studied this, and it's basically they're in this stage called trust versus mistrust. And if they don't learn that they can trust the person that's taking care of them, they're going to fall in this stage of mistrust. They're not, they're not going to trust you. They're not going to trust that you're going to be there when, when they need you. Um, so no, you should, if a baby's crying, you should check to see what is going on and it is okay to comfort them. It's okay to love on them. You cannot spoil a baby. Mm. You cannot. See, look at that. So God, she's like, that. that's why I fell in love with her. She's like, this is so intelligent. And not that I'm not, I'm just saying that she's, kind of oh, he's <laughs> super smart. <laughs> you know, that, but I, I yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But Angelique, yeah, other yes. people might be watching. On yeah. Facebook. Um, <laughs> um, the, so Angelique, love, we'd love to. So I will reach out to you. Just a quick shout out. If you don't know, go to her YouTube channel or excuse me, their YouTube channel. It's self-directed. Yes, Angelique. What we've uh, been told is BS. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> it but, is. I hate it when people and people used to tell me that, too, because I had a pouch like I carried my baby everywhere. Like she was always stuck to me, always holding her. Um, and people were like, oh, you're spoiling her. You're spoiling her. Well, I'm, mm -mm. I did it with both my babies. My my baby over there, Skylar, that came in. Oh, my gosh. She will cuddle with me and hug on me and love on me. And she's 24 years old. Um, I taught her physical touch and affection. And she is an amazing individual. Like, that child is talented. She is smart. Like, she is so, uh, oh, my gosh, she's just so amazing. And I carried her all the time. And, no, nope, did not spoil her. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> right? Trust me, it, there, there's a, there's a, there, there becomes a point where that detachment comes into play. Uh, but, that, again, we got to save some of that good ammo for <laughs> <laughs> for later topics of discussion because we're going to have plenty of things to discuss over uh, the next couple of months while we're putting this together. So, um, but yeah, we, we really wanted to touch on a lot of the bases of where people struggle in, you know, their marriages and even having long-term relationships. Um, you know, and that's one of the things, Oh, that's so true. I love this comment. Um, it's also why we release hormones when they cry. We wreck our nervous system when we reject that. Mm -hmm. Smart, smart, smart folks. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. For, oh, uh, about what we wanted to, you know, going further and what we're actually planning on. Um, because I think one of the things that I struggled with a lot and why this project is something that I've been very passionate about is because, I had my own issues with understanding love. Um, I struggled with it a lot uh, because I didn't know, first of all, how to love myself, then eventually how to love a partner. So those were both like things that I really had to go undertake as far as like how I wanted to grow and whether or not I was going to find what was going to make me happy. And I, I think a lot of the things that I had to go through led me to this point but as far as what we want to continue to do that's part of the process as well Is like i don't know everything i'm not an expert on love um what i am an expert on is just digging deeper and inquiring and asking questions that help me come to an understanding of things and i think that's one of the things i want to carry on going further in what we're about to 
undertake because this is a big part of who I am and my journey. So there you go. Just wanted to share that. And oh gosh, it, don't worry, baby. This is a, <laughs> yeah. this is a Twitch. <laughs> Since we're streaming on Twitch, um, <laughs> this is a. But hey, you're not anything until you go on Twitch and you get a a a, a, um, a troll bot over there that sends you messages. <laughs> so that's just normal. Just it's part of it's part of the conversation. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was an accident either, Yolanda. It was definitely fate. It was definitely God. Like no doubt because i mean once we started talking and just listening to each other i was like oh my gosh like there's really a person like you that exists in the world because i was not planning on getting married i didn't want to be with anybody like i was already making plans for my daughter to live with me for the rest of my life i wanted skylar to move back in i wanted uh, my daughter Naomi, she was five. I was already talking to her about, yeah, when when you get older, baby, you can still live with mommy. <laughs> Uncle Russell's gonna live with me forever. It's my brother, and I told my brother's girlfriend, I was like, um, yeah, just to let you know, if you fall in love with my brother, uh, he, I'm a package deal, so you're gonna have to move in with me at my house because my brother's never leaving me. He's gonna live with me until we both die. So like, I wasn't making plans to be with anybody. <laughs> So, yeah, it was definitely not an accident. Like, I, I believe it was God that put us together. And so my brother could finally have his own life one day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but, oh, but, oh God, I remember crutch words. Um, <laughs> I catch myself doing these things. Are you thinking about a but? No, but using, <laughs> see, look, using see the word. say but. I'm trying to, again, get into practice of not using crutch word because it's easy to, especially when you're talking and you, um, it's been a while. <laughs> um, is that one of yours too? No, um, it's just one of those words you kind of throw in there. It happens. <laughs> I try to, I try to consciously not allow myself the moment it's where I have to stop and think a little bit and give myself a break before I start talking again, even though. I have an issue with silence, and I know this, and we talked about this actually yes. last night. I know. When I when I asked him <laughs> questions when we first started talking, he would talk and talk <laughs> and talk. And, like, one question, like, he would talk in paragraphs for, like, I don't know how long until I finally was like, okay. Like, <laughs> we get it. but it was good because I was like, I'm glad he's a talker and just doesn't say one word because a lot of those guys online, you'll ask them a question, and it's like, yeah. The Cowboys. I mean, that was it. You know, nothing else. It was just one worded answers. So I was glad he was long winded, but yes, he <laughs> he I, does talk a lot. Yeah. Which is good. You got it's but like, he ha but he's quiet too sometimes, and so am I. So we enjoy our silence uh times as well. Yeah. So. It's like when you're writing a document and you gotta have too many words on one page and you need a page break so that you can go to the next page. That's kind of how I have to do in my in how I speak. <laughs> so it's it's a work in progress but it's like everything in our lives everything we are constantly trying to juggle and just make ourselves better and that's what this whole project is all about um i and want helping other people like yeah, that's a yeah. big thing because i know i struggled with trying to find the right person that fit with me and I know so many people struggle in relationships. So many people struggle in the relationships that they're in. They're like, they stay together and they're not happy. They'll stay with the same person for years and they're not happy. And it's like, why? Why are you still in that situation? Why don't you change? Why don't you do something? Why don't you spark up that marriage? Why don't you make a change? And so... um, you know, doing this, I was like, yeah, that's going to help people. And that's something that's my passion. That's why I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 14 years. And some people are like, bless your heart. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> bless your heart. And I'm like, this is my best job ever. This is the best job I've ever had in my entire life. I've done everything from customer service to being on the phone in a call center. I've worked for a pager company. I worked for Glamour Shots. I w did photography full time. Um, I, um, I worked for a computer company. Uh, so I did like so many different jobs and teaching has been by far my favorite because I can help students. I can be there for other people. 
and it just it makes me happy um to help other people so yeah when when we he started talking about it and he was like you know before i met you i had this vision that i was going to do you know my next show on love and i was like oh okay and so we started talking about it and you know i was like wow this this sounds like something i would i would don't mind helping you with and so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a great topic and and the for the fact that like yeah he said he loved me in 2 weeks right in the beginning and I loved him too, but it was like, it wasn't the love that it is now. And so especially reading in the book, it's like, love doesn't, you don't just say I love you and that's it. Like love grows. And so we talk about it and it's like, man, I love you even more today. I love you more today than I did yesterday. Like I love you more. And so it's just, it just keeps growing and getting bigger. Um, so that's how love can be, but not everybody understands love yeah. and not a lot of people are, are happy in their situations and that you know to, and what i said and when i said it to her like i learned that i could be that vulnerable and be okay with saying it and that's one of the things that i wanted to s discuss with not just myself but other individuals like yeah, especially in couples and marriages like who was the first one to say it like what was is it always the expectation that maybe the guy says it first is it the woman that's, that's, that's their intention to say that I love you first? I mean, I think that's a scary cliff that most, that both individuals, when they look at it go, okay, I don't know who's going to be the first to jump, but I'm going to watch. That's a good topic because we can talk to my brother and his girlfriend about that one and our own stories. Because, yeah, I was with a guy one time for three years waiting and he never said, I love you. And I stayed with him for three years. Oh, and that comment, Yolanda, oh, my God, that cracks me up. So did you see that? <laughs> yes, I, well, I actually had it on screen. I was I waiting for you to look I at it. I didn't see it at first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually it's the mom that <laughs> the girlfriend has to worry about. But you know what? She was a trooper, man. She stayed my friend. She hung out with me. We had our nail. We were actually getting our nails done when I told her that. Um, she hung out. We have talks. Like, she is an amazing person for sticking with it. And so I'm like, boy, you better tell her you love her because, like, <laughs> this woman is good. And, like, she's even willing to move in with us. So, yeah, you better <laughs> you better say you love her. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, that that is a, – and that is a topic, again, that's a sticky one to say, like, who who says it first? Who was the first one to make the move? Um, because people I, are scared of getting their heart broken. Yeah, that's uh, – being – being, being totally vulnerable, vulnerable um, is a quite a superpower. Like my good friend, Mr. Carl Sean Watkins always said, he calls himself Mr. Vulnerability. He's like, yeah, you got to be open to it um, or else you're just roommates. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good man. I don't know where this person keeps getting their advice from, but that is not a good, <laughs> it's not good. I was told, because let, let me here's read that. The thing. Let me read that first. Though. He says, okay, read it. It says, uh, I was told in order to be truly in love, you need to have offspring together or else you're just roommates. Wow. Wow. That is wow. Yeah. <laughs> so like we've talked about it and we're like, man, if we got together when we were younger, we'd have so many babies. <laughs> so many but um yeah unfortunately we didn't so we're in our 40s and we decided not to have any kids together uh so <laughs> yeah I'm done uh, so my last one I had she is five years old uh and I had her with her dad who I thought when we had the baby like we were gonna stay together like I really thought we were gonna stay together we were gonna have you know grow up but that didn't happen we our love grew apart and so I didn't stay with her father, and we ended up getting uh, separating and getting a divorce. And so I didn't think that I was going to, like, I thought that too, because I waited. I mean, I literally told myself as a kid, when when I grow up, when I get married, I'm going to, you know, have a family. I'm never going to get a divorce. And so I thought when I had a child, like, that bonded us. Like, we definitely weren't going to break up. But she was one and a half when we first separated. Um, so it, no, <laughs> children can sometimes change things in a marriage. Um, but we grew apart, we got divorced 
And when I found Gabe, I was like, okay, I think we were made for each other <laughs> because now I don't have to have babies to feel like I exist. <laughs> and so that's, I felt like I was an empty nest. That's why I had another child because I was like, my baby's growing up. I need another one. I can't just be a, like at home and like not have kids. And so when I found him and I was like, wait a minute, so my kids can leave me and I'll be okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Now we got to. Now yeah. I'm in love. Like, I'm okay. Have a life. Like, find love yourself. Like, yeah, I look, I was okay. Look at this. It. Look at this comment that uh, Angelique had. I love this one. She says, uh, I told my brother-in-law that I pick his girlfriend as my sister-in-law. So, don't so you mess don't mess it, it up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, hey, you know, it, it, you know, you, you don't get to choose. Sometimes you don't get to choose who your direct family is, but hey, you can pick, <laughs> you can pick the outliers to come in to your, to your, you know, to your tribe. You can have group. an influence. Influence. There you go. And then Yolanda, thank you for sharing. I love that. Uh, it's good to see you so happy. You've always been a fun guy, but Yvette Richardson seems to bring out the best in you. Yes, Aww, she does. Thank you, Yolanda. She truly does. She brings me, she's brought me to another level. Uh, so this time that I go out and start doing these things, um, you're going to see a lot of the influence that she's had on my life. So yeah, things will be, um, different. Oh yeah. We went to a party today and this guy was like, you want a beer? And he said, no, I'm good. And he's like, oh, why? And Gabe was like, because I'm on a diet. And he was like, that's why I don't get married, because I don't want no woman telling me I have to be on a God. diet. And he was like, um, I made that choice myself. I I want to be on the diet. I don't want to drink. And it's like, there's some guys out there that think that a woman might possibly control them. So they have this fear of, I guess, being in a relationship <laughs> yes. with somebody that has anything to say. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> like you're, you're not allowed to have your, no. your thoughts or opinions and you sit down <laughs> and it really took me back to thinking, Oh my God, there's still that chauvinistic machismo that <laughs> still exists in this world. And it really made me think like, man, I am, I have really grown. <laughs> I've grown a lot. Uh, cause you know, hearing that all the time when you're a male and you think, Oh, don't let your woman control you. You're going to do this or that. Uh, that's where the immaturity level when you're that young kind of plays into your mindset. And as you grow, you start seeing the realities of what a true partnership is and having that, that person in your life that is not a controlling entity. They are actually a, a thing that helps you elevate. I mean, that's the best part of it. You, you help each other, lift each other up. And I didn't. You want a pepper? You want a pepper? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. My my, my future brother in law brought me peppers. He brought his like, peppers. He was like, "Y'all should eat, eat those." Eat them all. Live. So I'm gonna take a bite so just to say. just to I don't know. Mm. Pretty good. Mm. It does taste like a bell pepper, but kind of. It's spicier when you get towards the middle where the seeds are. Mm. <laughs> I'll hold off on that. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, uh, you know, the whole point of why we, we um, were having so much fun and why we were ready to do this is because we, I took some time off last year from live streaming and being active on social media because I wanted to invest my time. Once I found this amazing woman in my life in learning to grow in love with her and, um, we both started getting excited when we started talking about this, excuse me, a couple of months ago, we actually talked about this and planned out this a few months ago. And, uh, we put it on the back burner because I, I think we both weren't ready to say, okay, I want to jump in and just start doing this yet. Plus I was having to write 16 page papers for oh, my yeah, classes. For your so yeah, yeah, she's still <laughs> going after her master. So that's kind of, yeah. Um, my next two classes are coming up. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> Yolanda said in a good way, Gabe can be your baby. Yeah. Yes. I call him baby. So yeah. And what was the um, one? So this one is, so is Gabe saying he's truly okay with his family's last name legacy ending with him. Um, 
Oh. Yeah, you know what? I, I, let me let me talk to this because I always talk about legacy. It was one of the questions I always asked in my previous shows. So have you never watched any of them? He doesn't know. They don't know that you have kids already, though. He does have four kids. I do have four kids. Mm-hmm. And even if I had all my kids were daughters and they got married and had to take on someone else's name and they went, they were, I would be fine with it. My legacy isn't in my last name. My legacy is in what I create and what I share into the world. Sometimes it's not a, sometimes it's not a human being or an individual. Sometimes um, it's the lasting impact and the things that you share in your life that are part of your legacy. How do you say that things about like Mahatma Gandhi and mother Teresa who never had a child. She spent her life dedicated to other people in service. Mm -hmm. So I think when it comes to legacy, legacy is just one of those things that is kind of set on what your individual preference is. So I am not defined on whether or not I have more kids. Yeah. You know what? I have kids. They will be part of my legacy going forward, but it's not just what I create for, for them. It's going beyond that. It's making an impact beyond my days on this earth. And that's how I see legacy. So yeah, I would be okay with it if I didn't have kids 100% without a doubt. To be honest, if you want to know. All right. Um, but, you know, I, I, I didn't get to answer it because I was answering that question. But in a good way, Gabe can be your baby. Yes. I love being babied right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do enjoy it. It's like um, I tell her all the time we have a couple of cats. And when she, like, <laughs> rubs the back of my head or something. And I was like, man, if I was a cat right now, I'd be purring so much. <laughs> Cause it feels so nice. It feels nice to be babied and loved. And that's, that's part of my love language. I knew, I knew that very early on that the physical touch was a huge part of how I communicate. A lot of guys are like that. If you don't know that, that is a big thing for a lot of us is touch. Um, so yeah, I mean, getting that kind of attention, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know who wouldn't Which want it, it. It should be for everybody, but it's also how you were raised. Um, and then it's, you know, I guess if some people give in to it and realize, like, it's it's part of intimacy. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely what you're influenced by as you're growing up as well. Because some people are pushed away by their parents. They're told, just get away. Like, I, I don't want to hold you right now. I don't want to hug you right now. And they're pushed away, so they learn that that's not something that another person wants and so they in turn don't express that type of feeling when it comes to love there you go i mean listen to that and i mean so i said this is going to be fun because i'm this i'm going to be working um going to be working with a partner um and i and i'll i haven't been the best at that. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I haven't been the best at it. So this is again, part of the learning curve for me as well, like how to get better at doing this and um, allowing somebody else into the creative space that um, I've been so used of by myself, like trying to do and like, I think it's getting better. Uh, like even today when we we're creating the intro, I'd always ask her reach over. What do you think? Like I want her thoughts, her feedbacks, because this isn't just about me. Um, yeah, I know a lot of the things that I'm creating here, but as time goes on, she's going to get more familiar with it. And yeah, you're going to see more of her interjections of, of what um, she wants to see created as well, because this is a joint project. This is two people doing this, not just me. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions, any other comments, um, anything else about love Yeah, or I mean, about the book? Or anything else? Because as we go forward, like I said, part of it's going to be creating a lot of the social media, um, which is kind of my thing to put together. I've done a few of these in the past, so I might as well just do it all over again. But we want to be able to have an avenue for anybody who's watching or want to drop in comments or share this with anybody else to be able to reach out and communicate with us so that if we wanted to say, bring on an individual who might have a question or might want to share a topic that needs discussing. So yeah, we're going to be open to bringing in a lot of the 
individuals in the community that we hope to build around what we're going to discuss. So, yeah, like one of the one of the topics is navigating the dating world, and so I know that. And, and we were talking to actually our preacher the other day, um, and he was talking about how he just he can't believe how so many people keep trying to um, catfish. Uh, catfish, like using his picture. And so there's like dating profiles set up with his picture. And so I went up to him and I was talking to him about it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, that's crazy that people keep using your picture. And he's like, I know. And he goes, I don't know how people even get on the dating world and like get on these dating apps. And we were like, oh, well, that's how me and Gabe met. And so he's like, really? Um, So just the dating scene has changed so much and I remember when online dating first started, it was back when I was in my 20s. So it's been around for at least 20 years. Um, so when the internet came out, like websites such like Match.com was one of them and eHarmony came out uh, over 20 years ago. And I remember joining the sites and they would have like seven days for free if you sign up with your email So I'd signed in with my email and then I would make a whole new email account. So I'd have another free seven days. And so I learned how to work the system to, to keep on the dating (laughs) site for free for, and pretty much indefinitely, you just make new email accounts. Um, I don't do that anymore. I found out 20 years later. So when I got on it again, it wasn't on the internet. It was on your phone. So you had to do the phone apps. And so when I did it, I was like, oh, you can't get anything for free. And so I found the only one I found for free was uh, Facebook, um, dating. the Facebook dating. So I did that one. And then I was talking to my brother about it. And he's like, well, I met my girlfriend on Hinge. And so that's why I decided to download Hinge. Um, so I met several people. Then I shut it down for like six, six or seven months. And then I opened it back up, met a few more people. Um, and then I met Gabe. But it's it's like you have to sometimes kiss a lot of frogs until you find the right one. <laughs> one of them I kissed kissed like a lizard. <laughs> His tongue was like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that one was crazy. Um, but yeah, you you meet a lot of different people, and it's not going to be the very first person you meet. Like you have to talk, you have to get to know somebody. And you have to figure out if that's, like, the person that you want to continue your relationship with. Um, but so many people struggle, and they're, they're not everybody is good and decent online. Um, so you have to go through a lot. But, yeah, one of the topics will be just oh, navigating the dating. Na- uh, navigating the online dating world because it is such uh, – look, I, I jumped into it uh, a couple years ago when I got out of my last relationship. and. Um, man, it was, it was a kick to the face. It was that splash of cold water, um, that I didn't quite know what I was getting into. So yeah, it it took a lot to figure out how to build out of your dating pro. I mean, there's just so much to it now. We're going to, um, I've reached out to a few dating experts and we're going to have them on and we're going to talk about, um, some of the things for people who are trying to get back into the dating scene. I mean, there's just been so many things that are, um, that are always changing and shifting and technology is one of them. So, um, yeah. And, and, and that's true. I mean, I think that's the good part about it. Yolanda is just that it gets a bad rap, it but, does. but it, it proves that you can be positive and there's a rewarding experience for finding love. And that's true. And I think that's why we want to talk about it and explore it and give people options. Um, um, you know, oh, we got another question here from our friend over on Twitch. Um, so do you believe in the term tough love as right. defined by being passionate or humiliating? Oh God. Humiliating in to, order to get your point across, across. to, to protect, protect the loved one's potential bad. bad decision. No, I remember my mom used that on us when we were kids. She was like, tough love. So she would like do things and like, yeah, she had learned about that back when I was a kid, and it didn't work so well for me because for a long time, I did not like my mom. Um, I did not want to spend time with her, and I love my mom. I love my mom now, um, but yeah, it's 
it, it took a while. It took a while for me to like grow in love with my mom because my mom tried that with us and yeah, no, I don't like it. Yeah. There's, there's something to, um, letting them have, we, and we heard a, our pastor mm-hmm. talked about this in a sermon about people having to face consequences. Yeah. Now if it, you're talking about that, yeah. then yeah, I totally believe in letting a child face a natural consequence. Um, but that's different, I think, than than the way they talked about tough love and what my mom. Like, yeah, that, I think that's us. a different in as far as far as in terminology of like um, <clears throat> when you're child rearing and doing things like saying, oh, we're going to, you know, the only way to discipline them is using a belt. That's the old school way and beating a child or whatever. I, I don't think that always works. Um, you know, I've heard stories and we even have had had discussions with individuals, um, who talk about having a strict military father who was in the tough discipline and, um, and being, you know, rough on their, their children. And it turns out that it wasn't what worked for them. Um, you know, each child or each individual that comes into this world, you know, they have different ways of communicating and how, they learn and how they reason and it's not always through being tough on somebody. Yeah. Sometimes you do have to give the squeaky wheel a little more grease. You do have to pay attention. Some, sometimes that's all it takes is for somebody to get a little bit of attention because they don't want to go the route or they don't, they're not accepting of the tough route, the tough love route. So I think you have to show them caring love, even when they don't show it to you. So I have a a tough child. Like my child sometimes throws the nastiest fit, sometimes hits me, sometimes says she hates me. Um, Not Skylar. Skylar was very different. So I had children on different ends of the spectrum. Um, But with my youngest, like she, she is much more difficult. And I think that God allowed me to have her when I was older and wiser um, because I don't think I could have handled her in my early 20s. Like, when I had Skylar, because Skylar was so easy. Um, but with my daughter, Naomi, you know, she's five and she's like that sometimes. And so I show her that I'm going to love you no matter what, you know, you say you hate me. I'm like, well, I just love you more. Like, I'm never going to stop loving you just because you say that, you know, those are just words and I know you don't mean it. And so eventually like she has to calm herself down and, you know, we've been practicing breathing techniques, um, once she's calm, she's like, mommy, I'm really sorry. And you can tell like, she is sorry. She's like, I don't know what overcame, you know? And it's cause she's still, she's only five. She's still learning her emotions. She's learning how to channel them, how to, um, you know, execute her emotions and not every time she's going to do it perfectly. And just like an adult, I mean, adults have meltdowns like crazy. I've seen some adults go off on people at stores. I've seen adults go off, you know, with road rage. You know, there are so many adults that act like five-year-olds sometimes because they never learn these skills. They haven't learned how to calm themselves down. And so, yeah, she might hit me now. She might say she hates me, but I know she's not going to do that forever because she is learning. And so every day gets better and better. The more sleep and food she eats, like that helps calm her down. And then talking things through when she's calm. Um, So those are ways to show them love. And you have to model it. That is the most important thing for a child is you have to model love. You have to show them what it means to be loving and to be caring, to be considerate, to be kind. Um, how you treat another person because if you are rude and you are unkind and you are mean or you know you're just talk bad about people whatever you do in front of your children they're gonna be your little mini me's they're gonna copy you they're gonna do exactly what you do little kids learn so much faster on how to uh, be socialized in the world based on what they see they learn it through modeling and so it's it's not being tough on them. It's showing them how to behave. It's showing them how to love by modeling it yourself. And that's why it's so important, especially if you're in a marriage, in a relationship, to never show that violence or that 
arguing and bickering in a mean and hateful and spiteful way in front of your kids. Like that is the most horrible thing to do. Horrible thing to do in front of your children. Mm. Like you have to show that and that person that you care and you love about love them. You cannot show hate in front of your kids because that's where they learn hate from is from you. Yeah. Man. <laughs> but thanks. You no, know, that was a really good question. I think that's a subject that maybe we we touch on at some point. Um because there all are there are different aspects of love and that's one of them when it comes to tough love, discipline, that sort of thing. So I'm going to make a mental note of that and maybe add that at some point down the line to the, the different discussion topics that we've been looking at. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, it's already been an hour. Gosh, it flies by pretty quick, doesn't it, baby? It <laughs> Faster than you even know. Trust me, I've done enough of these to know that an hour goes by pretty quick and people... I know. Um, I wanted to start this so much earlier because I know probably more people would have tuned in if we had started it earlier. Yeah. But, you know, we're still new at getting everything set up. Up in the practice. This, this will get, it's better. like anything else. It's practice. It's, it's practice to get better. Yeah. That's a part of it. That's a, I've always been one to say put in the reps. Um, do the things, you know, get your chops in. So but that, I do like all the questions that are coming. Like, yeah, yeah, very deep and insightful questions that we're so, answering. Like, I love it. Good. I mean, Twitch, Twitch showing out tonight. Our Twitch stream is, <laughs> is pretty. And they're coming from Twitch. Yeah, that's Twitch. Oh. So I'm streaming on YouTube, Twitter. Yeah, because it just says. So that's yeah. how I. Yeah, well, I don't that's know their kind name. of like their. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but we had a few Twitchers like come in. Like, that was another one that's like throw in their stuff. But <laughs> yeah, um, we, we know that there'll be more, um, we'll get more viewers and people to tune in. I, that, trust me, I know the secret sauce, how to build a, uh, a following and how to build a community. So I'm not so worried about that. Um, more about the content and the intention behind what we're sharing yeah. is really where I want to push my, uh, a lot of my focus on. So, all right. You wanted to add anything else before we get out of here, baby? I love you. I love, <laughs> I love you too. I love you. Got, I love you. We got to do that too. That's going to be one of the things we're going to make. So again, it's PDA. If you're not into that, you know, turn your screen at this moment. I'll give you a PDA warning. As a, um, do, or if you just see us leaving it. But, yeah. your warning. <laughs> oh, okay. Love it. They share. Uh, so it is for game zone. Doctor Forever. Okay. Game Zone Doctor Forever. Ah. Yes. So thank you for sharing that, though. Uh, hey, tune in, man. Tune in. Uh, we will be doing this more often. Um, spread the word if you want to share, if you've got more questions to come back, or if at any one point you might think of even sharing your own story, your own experiences about love. You seem to have a lot of deep, introspective questions about it. So, um Yes, Yolanda, it is a great way to end the night. <laughs> we always make sure that we make that a big part of um, our relationship. Just to make sure the other one knows that they're 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 loved. Yes, just like you Every guys. Every day, all the time. <laughs> yeah, we, we make you guys. <laughs> we come never on. get tired of it. He's like, I say, I love you. He's like, say it again. <laughs> I love you. Say it again. Say it again. I love you. I love you. I love you. And he's like, okay, say it one more say time. Say it one more time. <laughs> He loves it when I say it. I do. I do. So, <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you want to go check out the book, it is called Love by, hold on, pull it up again. There you go. Look at that, baby. <laughs> Save you on the screen. I'm looking <laughs> You're at looking the book. At the book. <laughs> I'm looking at the book. There's my love. Leo <laughs> Buscaglia. Is that, is that what we yeah. say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go check it out. It's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful read if you want to go check it out. It's not too long either. Either, like yeah. It's, it's a pretty quick So if read. you want to read it, it's available on Amazon. Like or About you can 200 add, pages. You can find it on Audible. I'll share the link in the comments after the show. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I do appreciate it. You guys, again, are the reason why we do this. Um, we are so appreciative of any and all the comments and everybody just showing up and sticking around for as long as you have got it. Yes, that was a it's, long. It's been wonderful. So, uh, we will catch you again very soon. I will start scheduling these so you know that you will, uh, we can have you guys following along. And once I get an email and everything set up, uh, if you want invites, we will create a, a list 
as well. We will send you invites every time we do one of these or we put out new podcast episodes or just our YouTube channel in general. So thank you so much again, everybody. Thank you, Londa. Thank you, uh, Angelique. Um, Dr. Oh my God. Game zone. Dr. Game zone, forever. Dr. Yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in with a good question. Uh, you guys, Oh, Dr. CJ, uh, Dr. Constance Leland, CJ Thank for tuning you. in over there on LinkedIn. You guys are pretty incredible and we will be back again very, very soon. So until then you guys have a wonderful rest have a of good night, evening, morning, <laughs> wherever you are day. Um, and Hey, I guess I'm going to have to come up with a new tagline. I can't, I don't want to continue saying live, love and serve like anybody else. We're going to, we're going to change that around something that we want to share together. So uh, we'll just sign off for now and say thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful night and stay tuned for more wonderful, wonderful news to come. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.